I recently got COVID again, so I thought I'd do a second annual COVID film festival. As my wife took care of the kids, I sort of tried to isolate a little bit in our uh, backyard studio. So here are some films I watched while this happened. One of my favourite documentaries is the Errol Morris film Thin Blue Line. I think it set a high benchmark for murder mystery docos. Funning stories with eccentric characters and highly stylized recreations. Last Stop Larimer definitely has some strong correlations to that film, a tiny town drama featuring larger than life characters, all whom are suspects of the disappearance of a man called Paddy. It unravels a whole bunch of possible motives, relationships and characters in a truly intriguing way and does so with a really strong visual approach. Everyone in Larimer was a suspect. Hello. This is Roger Corman. Corman, known as King of the B-Movie, passed away recently. He was known primarily as a producer who gave a whole host of film people their start in the industry. He produced one of Scorsese's first feature films, worked with a young Ron Howard, and filmed the original Little Shop of Horrors in two and a half days, giving Jack Nicholson one of his first big breaks. This video linked in the description gives a great summary of the idea of the school of Roger Corman. Advice on how to stay to a schedule and stick to a strict budget that would be the bedrock of many great filmmakers, actors and technicians. Apparently all of his films made a profit. They were made very cheaply, primarily because he was a stickler for keeping things fast and cheap. Except this film which he directed, The Intruder. A smooth-talking outsider played incredibly well by an unknown William Shatner at the time arrives to a small southern town hoping to support local townspeople who oppose school integration, a hot topic of that time. Fair warning, it deals with the issue with some would say relevant language of that time. It's a bit heavy-handed, but does contain some great scenes and performances. It's sad that Corman didn't attempt to make anything as risky or personal again due to the poor response of the film, but that's what made him such an interesting man. He loved film, he loved cinema, but he was about getting things done quickly, cheaply, and as broadly as possible. RIP to a great man. It wasn't too long into the creation of cinema that filmmakers started to explore the medium in a more experimental fashion. The storytelling elements of film quickly gravitated towards novels and plays, but early adopters of the art form also saw it like any other visual medium, incorporating expressionism and surrealism into their films. Peter Greenaway's The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover is a fairly straightforward in its storytelling, but it certainly feels like it borrows from the viscerally assaulting nature of early surrealist filmmakers. It creates this dystopian, brutal world dominated by Dumbledore, aka Richard Gammon, a gangster who's taken over an upper-class restaurant. His wife, Georgina, played by Helen Mirren, is conducting an affair with her lover, Michael Alan Howard, aided by the kindly cook, Richard Bowringer. The way that Greenaway uses expressive light and constructs these huge tableaus of humanity with wonderful art direction and wide shots, it really creates a true sense of dread in this brutal world, and it's really refreshing for a film that's 25 years old. It's always great to watch a film that reminds you that cinema doesn't always have to be so straightforward and digestible as what a lot of movies tend to be. Reality takes an interesting approach in telling the true story of an arrest of a lady called, strangely enough, Reality Winner. She was arrested in 2017 on suspicion of leaking classified documents and was later sentenced to five years in jail. In almost real time, Reality uses the actual audio transcription made by the arresting FBI agents with actors reading the dialogue seemingly word for word. It's refreshing to have a different approach to a concept we've seen a million times, cops interrogating a suspect. And the reality, so to speak, of the situation is much more mundane. Two central agents making small talk as a larger FBI team searches reality's house, the trio awkwardly standing outside making painful small talk. It feels like a stilted visit from a twice removed cousin, probably closer to how white collar investigations actually pan out. Sidney Sweeney did an excellent job portraying reality in the first half of the film as having a strangely calm presence, which can be interpreted either as a smooth nature of an adept liar or just an odd lady completely unaware of the enormous trouble she might be in. Muscly and paunchy FBI agents stuffed into tight polos surround her, swinging from casual chat mode to intimidation within seconds. Josh Hamilton plays a great dorky FBI agent Garrick, almost out awkwardly reality's cluelessness, as is the tougher Merchant Davis as Agent Taylor. I'm always interested when a filmmaker takes something familiar, an interrogation of a possible suspect, and does something different and unique, and reality does that. What kind of articles from Pulse do you pull out? Uh, usually reference material about like... Uh, 
but just making sure, like so many references, that I keep having a relook. Thanks for watching. Let me know what interesting films you've been seeing in the comments below.